Hey guys, so one of my favorite topics on this channel is making alternative types of heat, whether indoors or outdoors. I love to go camping and hiking, and so a lot of these I use on my hiking and camping trips. As you can see, I've experimented with a lot of different types, and this particular heater has almost 10 million views on it as the time of this recording. So one thing that we have to consider is, is that all of these heaters use some type of fuel, and so what if you could have a fuel that cost you absolutely nothing to get, to produce, and it could last for a long time each, one, each time you use it, so you have an unlimited supply of fuel that costs you nothing. Unlike this particular heater, it uses a fuel that has to be replenished and purchased either at your local hardware store or online. So I'm going to show you how to make a fuel for all of these heaters, maybe except for this one, but these type of heaters will use this type of fuel and you'll never run out. Now just for a second, I do want to clarify when I say free, I want to say that it is possible to make this fuel absolutely free. It only costs you the time and energy of using your own hand power and muscle power. But what I'm going to use today is I'm going to use tools to speed the process up that makes it a lot easier to produce. But you can get all the components for free and then you can use your own strength and energy to produce these fuel. So I'm just going to say, I know that's going to be in the comments, so there is some cost in the way I'm doing it, but you can do this completely free of charge and you can have an unlimited supply of fuel. Now, if you live in the States or in most Western countries, you're going to know exactly what this is because I'm sure you have a lot of these around your house and you're probably throwing them away. So cardboard is one of the main components of this fuel. So don't throw it away. Just keep it and collect it. I have literally a mountain of this stuff, so I would never run out of fuel. If I'm only using this component, but I'm going to add a second component that's completely optional and that's sawdust. I do a lot of tree pruning and sawing and I always say that if you're going to use sawdust in this recipe, make sure that it's not treated lumber. Make sure that it is natural, something you're cutting down a tree or you're trimming some vines. And if you have a shredder, like a limb shredder, or I guess they call that a... Uh, I forget the name of it off the top of my head. If you'll put it down in the description, it's, it's escaping me just at the moment. But anyways, if you have access to lots of sawdust, then that's going to be an added optional component. Now, I ordered one bag of this just for this video. So this is what I've ordered here, and that is a pre-made sawdust for making sausage and cooking. So I'm just going to say that you can get access to this. If you don't have a, I have a two acre yard and I'm always pruning and cutting limbs. So I just wanted to test the quality of this and I found that it was really good. So take a look in the description and you'll be able to find this exact product if they're still selling it. Sometimes Amazon has products and sometimes they go out of stock. So take a peek in the description if you don't have access to sawdust and you want to add this part to this recipe. Now we need to break down the cardboard into the smallest size possible and you can either use a razor blade or scissors. One thing you want to do is you want to make sure you remove all the labels. If they even look plastic like this right here, these tapes, you don't want this going into your fuel. So you'll either need to remove it or cut around it to make sure that it doesn't have any of those toxic substances. So I can tell you that most of your tapes are not going to be good to use in this fuel. So just make sure you either cut around it like that and then you want to take your scissors or your razor blade and cut it into the smallest size possible. I'm going to show you something that I had in my office that makes this super easy to move on to the next step. But if you're using just your own power, you could even tear these into the smallest pieces possible. So remember, we want to break down the cardboard into the smallest pieces. I know this is time consuming, but taking one afternoon to do this, you can make a huge supply of these and store them away for quite a long time until you need them. Now this has been in my office for years and it works great. This is strong enough to even cut up plastic credit cards. So if I get some offer in the mail that it comes with one of the bogus or fake credit cards, I just run it through the shredder. But what we want to do is, is if you have one of these, and this is just an Amazon basic, so I'll put the link in the description. It's not an expensive shredder, so you don't have to worry about overpaying for it. But this will save you a lot of time if you just run your cardboard. Once you cut it into smaller pieces, you can just run it through the shredder and you'll have a huge supply of cardboard ready to go to the next step. Now, as you can see, this is the perfect size for the product we need. So if you're cutting this with your scissors or you're tearing it into small pieces, you want to get each piece of cardboard broken down into the smallest piece, piece possible so it can go on to the next step with minimal effort. Now, the next thing you need is a container of any size you want because you can make this in a very small batch or you can make it in batches even bigger than this. You're not limited to a five gallon bucket. You could go up to a, a trash can that's waterproof. So We've taken the cardboard, when we put 75% cardboard and 25% of the 
shredded cherry bark, I guess is what it is. But anyways, the sawdust, 25%, and the, excuse me, the cardboard, 75%. And the thicker it is, the better. So you want it in the consistency, almost like Play-Doh. You want to be able to get all the moisture out of it, and we'll put a small additive in it to make it work even better. That's optional as well, but this right here is the next step. This has been sitting in this bucket for over 24 hours, and the cardboard is breaking down. But I'm going to show you something you have to do when you first put it in there to get it ready for this next step. Now, a lot of people are not going to have this device right here, but if you do, or if you want to order it, this is a blend mixer that you hook up to a standard drill, and I'll put a link in the description. Depending on what type of drill you have, this makes the job so much easier. So I would recommend a cordless drill because you can move it around. You don't have to worry about the cord in the way. But this is one I really like. It just makes this job super easy. But if you don't have this, you could use a kitchen blender, a mixer, I guess they call it, or you could blend this by hand. Do it once when you first mix the two ingredients together with the water. You want it in a very thick oatmeal consistency. Wait 24 hours and do it again if you need to add a little bit of water because of evaporation. And then do that two times till you get it to that really thick consistency. But you want still moisture to be in it. Now, in order to make the fuel pellets, there's a few things you need. And one of the most basic things you could use is a used caulking tube. And basically, this is something you would throw away. So it's basically free. It's something you use for another purpose. I think sometimes the caulking on some of these less expensive don't have the good of thickness to it. This clear one has a little bit thicker. And PVC, I found, sometimes will work if you can get a thin-walled PVC. This particular gun will not work on this because the wall is too thick, and so our plunger will not go into there properly. However, I had some leftover pieces to a shop vac that I never used. It was just inside of a cabinet. You can order these online, these extensions. They're not expensive at all. It's made by shop vac, actually. And so this would be great for something like this. If you're wanting to make a huge fuel tab, you could use something like this, an oversized caulk gun, and this right here, these two together, I'll show you exactly how to put it together. But to make these fuel tablets, they'll last forever. Once you put them in dry storage, you don't have to worry about anything happening to them or not working in the future. They're perfectly easy to store away, and just one little additive can make them work even better. Now, even though I've already made three of these using the empty caulk containers, I'm gonna make one with this particular shop vac accessory. And just remember, these have a slight inlay to them they go inward just a little bit so just remember you want to use the widest part based upon your plunger on your device on your caulking gun just make sure you don't use the small end because it can become wedged in there so let's cut this in half and then we'll cut the second piece in half as well now after making a little bit of a mess i've taken one and just cut it right in half just like that and then the first one is they're going to be our pellet maker so it's going to be this size but we need to do one more thing to this part and this is how the setup will look when we're removing it. This is the setup when we're producing it. I'll get one of the caulk guns, the larger of the two caulk guns, and show you that when we're creating this, this is going to sit at the bottom of the caulk gun when we're doing the compression. Also, to keep any of the material from coming out of the bottom, I've created this right here. I've taken a washer, glued another washer to the top of it because I want this hole to be just just big enough to release some water. I'm going to put that at the bottom so water and all the fluids can come out of our fuel pellet and then we'll be able to go on to the next step but just remember that you need something to stop a lot of the fluid and a lot of the material from coming out of the bottom of whatever size caulk gun you're using now the next thing we want to do is we want to put in some holes so we can get all of our water out of each fuel pellet so we'll put about about every half inch we're going to put a very small hole maybe less than a quarter of an inch you don't want them very big you just want to remove as much water as you can from each fuel pellet All right, so the first thing you want to do is set this into your caulk gun, whether you have this size or one of the small ones, and make sure that you put your washer in the bottom of it so most of your fluid and your materials will be continued inside of your device there. Take a handful of our well and just wring it out a little bit of our well wet sawdust and cardboard and push it into your compression device is what I'm calling it and you just want to just lightly push it in there. You don't have to put a lot of force to it. And this, like I said, is very messy, but this is how you make them. And once they're through, they are like a piece of wood. They're so hard. They will last for a very long time in storage. And when you go on a hike or a camp or you have an emergency situation, you need to use these, 
they're stored perfectly and if you're in a snowstorm or you have a hurricane tornado and everything is wet outside these will be bone dry and ready to use so let's go and make our first one right here make sure it lines up properly there and then start doing compression you'll see a lot of the water is being squeezed out of it and you can make these at whatever size you want to but you need to leave enough gap at the top where you can fill the tube to remake each fuel pellet so let's see if you can see that a little bit easier as you compress harder and harder you can see a lot of the moisture is being squeezed out release that not too easy when it's compressed really hard all right so we have a very compressed fuel pellet here and I'm going to take the other piece let's go right back up to my table there and put this one into the I guess you could say this is kind of the discharge chamber now go back and do the same thing again I'm hoping I'm on camera there and just carefully push it out until it comes out into our half piece a lot easier to collect like that and then I'll show you exactly what you need to do but that's how you get it into the secondary piece there Let's see I'm not trying not to make a huge mess all over the greenhouse so I'll take this out carefully now when you first take it out there is the chance of it falling apart because it needs to harden so you're going to have to give this 24 hours and a great way to do this totally freeze to put this out in sunlight and it will bake it into a really hard form if you're in an area where you don't have any sunlight or you don't mind using your stove or if you're already cooking something else put this in your stove anywhere from 350 to 400 degrees for about two to three hours and it will become like a brick it'll be so hard so I made some of these for my homemade solo stove and these are like I said 75 percent of the cardboard and 25 percent of the cherry sawdust so again if you want to order that you could have some of that set aside you could make it as little as 10 percent but that will just really help bind it together and add a little bit to more to the flammability I will say that you could take these and put them in some type of container metal preferably put it just a little bit maybe half an inch of something like this this denatured alcohol rubbing alcohol and then stand the each fuel pellet up on its end and let it absorb some of it but not a lot just you want one end to be absorbing some of the fuel and then you can store it away in a plastic bag like this so when you go to use them whether it's an emergency or a camping or hiking trip you have dry fuel anytime you need it you can store this in a backpack your camper anywhere inside of a pantry for emergencies now let's say you didn't have any of these products that I showed you and all you had was the cardboard and maybe not even the sawdust you can make one of these with your hand just by compressing it like this let it sit out in the sun or you could bake it in the oven and this becomes as hard as a rock but it will burn and you can also set it into the fuel as I mentioned if you don't have this type of fuel almost everybody has rubbing alcohol so you can get it to absorb a little bit it'll light easier and you could have like this type of fuel pellet if you needed it without any of the tools I showed you before but I think I like these better because you can make these in various sizes and they store a little bit easier and they don't roll around quite as bad in my camping gear now I made this small stove from a cold coffee brew filter and a couple of tin cans and I'll show you exactly how this works we're going to take one of the mid-sized ones that I've created put it into our canister and then we're going to add a little bit of rubbing alcohol we're going to take our torch be careful because there can be some vapors a little bit of I'm a little bit low on fuel there but you can see it lit up right away put that on there and if it was nighttime you would see that this puts out quite a bit of heat takes a minute to heat up but you'll heat, have heat from the sides of the can and this is just my micro mini what I call this like a, a radiant heater but this piece right here gets really hot you could cook above it remove this and just put you some other cans and things like that you can put your pot or whatever you're cooking with right there but it's putting out a lot of nice heat now and so this is a great thing for emergencies for camping and hiking anywhere you need heat so you could use this uh, around a picnic table or anything like that and just when it's cold outside this can put out just the right amount of heat and you can also use it as a cooking device all right so it's been burning for about a minute or two and we're at about the very top there where it and i'm just pointing at the top of our little micro mini heater here almost 400 degrees it's heating up as it goes and so down here at the can level it is quite a bit of cooler 
a lot of the heat is up here on the top portion of our coffee brew filter that I made. And if you want to see this video, I'll put a link in up in the top right where you can watch how to create this small micro heater. But anyways, as I said earlier, eh, close to 400 degrees. It varies a little bit. We're getting a little bit of wind today. It's probably cooling it down just a bit. But there you go. A super way to create fuel that you'll have an endless supply to. And if you don't have access to cardboard, I can guarantee your neighbor, your local store is throwing it away in droves. So guys, I will say that these fuel capsules or pellets, whatever you want to call them, they're not designed for indoor use, unless you're using them inside of a fireplace and that would be perfectly okay. But you still want to be cautious of this. Anytime you're dealing with an open flame, there's always the chance of children knocking something over or a pet doing the same thing. So just be careful anytime you're using these pellets. Make sure you have proper safety equipment. If you're in a campground, make sure you have a fire extinguisher in your gear or in your vehicle so you could quickly put out of a fire in case something happens. So these work great. If you're interested in seeing more content that may or may not ever be on YouTube, take a look at the Patreon link below. I have a lot of free PDFs in there. Some content that's for members only so you can take a look and see what you're interested in doing. If you just want to see free material, there's a lot of that there as well. So guys, I really appreciate you watching. If you have a question about this video or any previous video, I hope you'll become a public subscriber first. That helps the channel grow and I can sort the questions out by people who are actually subscribe to the channel that makes it a lot easier for me because i get anywhere from one to three hundred comments and questions a day and it's just impossible to answer all when you got so many other things going on i really appreciate everybody who subscribes to the channel so guys have a great day